everyone. So today we're going to talk about our chickens, incubating chickens, and we're going to talk about maple sap and making maple syrup. Hi. So it's March 23rd. It's about 15 degrees Celsius out. So we are going to see if there's any sap waiting for us at the trees that we tapped. Right yeah. Here. And there's probably going to be a lot because yesterday we got a lot and it wasn't as hot as today. So, so here we go. <laughs> Let's get some. <laughs> And we have, I don't know, how much more do we have? Eight. Eight more. one is empty. <laughs> what about one? this one? Ooh. Good. Yeah. Bang. Ooh, it's still dripping. Huh. Ooh, I want to take some sap. Mm, yummy. <laughs> Mwah. <laughs> right, so how many are we at? Five? Yeah. And to me, the sap just tastes like water with sugar. Really. To me, that's what it tastes like. Yesterday, um, the buckets were like, well, some of them were like halfway. But... Now it's, now they're not. Well, from what we've read, for the sap to run, it's supposed to be freezing at night and then above freezing during the day. But last night, I don't think it got below freezing. I think it was just a low of minus two. And now today, geez, their temperature gauge said it was plus 17 earlier this afternoon. So I think the sap's just slower. Mm-hmm. Oh, it's still going to get some. Yeah. So in our barred rock flock, we have one rooster and ten hens. And they are really consistent layers. And these guys are a year old. Uh, yeah, a year old this month. Uh, they Some of them didn't start laying until they were about five months. But they are really hardy birds. Like we had no losses with either chicks or over the winter. Um, they lay regularly. Even through the winter, they're pretty good. And they've all... And they're all really healthy. Uh, we don't hold our chickens. I mean, but as you can see, they're... They're pretty calm. The ro uh, Robert, the rooster here, <laughs> uh, has never attacked anyone. Um, so I really like these birds and I think they're beautiful. They lay a light tan, uh, large or medium to large size egg. Our second flock consists of an Easter, or sorry, an olive egger rooster. So the Easter egger was in here. We swapped them. So we have our olive egger rooster in here and a mix full. So. There's Ollie. Can I zoom in? Oh, he ran away. Oh, well, we'll talk about the hens. We have, these are called Columbian Rock Cross, the white and black ones. Uh, and then we have two Rhode Island Reds in here and one uh, brown sex link. And to be honest, I cannot tell them apart. I think the Rhode Island Reds are these two here. They have some teal feathers in their tails. Oh wait, no, so does the other one. Honestly, <laughs> they look the same and to me, so... Oh, hold on. Ah. The Rhode Island Reds, I know we're Rhode Island Reds because we got them as chicks and they were that 
reddish dark color and had the uh, like chipmunk stripes on them. The brown sex links, which I'll show you in the next vlog, we just we got from somebody. Uh, one, what I believe is an Australorp. She, <laughs> Eva named her space. She's beautiful. She's black, but her feathers are iridescent. She is our best forager. If there ever, you know, if there's finally bugs around and insects, if any chicken has it in her mouth, it's always uh, our black Australorp. These guys are really good layers too. Again, they're all about one year. I think the brown sex link is older, a bit space, older than that. Space is like three years though. Oh yes, yeah, sorry. You're right, and space is older. But she's still laying really well. And that's our olive acre, who is Ollie. And I think he's beautiful. Hi, Ollie. So our third flock is in with the male goats who are bugging me right now. Uh, I don't have anything. Hold on here. There's some, some people don't like male goats. I think they're so cute and funny. Anyways, bear, teddy, teddy bear. Oh. <laughs> get down, get down, get down, get down. I'm sure they'll be a lot less cute if they ever head but me. <laughs> Anyways, so our third flock, we have an Easter egg rooster. So he came out of a tealish blue colored egg. And he is with the brown or red sex links that we got from someone who just wasn't interested in raising chickens anymore. So let's go take these guys. So here's all the red sex links. Hi girls, hello, hello. And that is Mr. Shiny. He is a beautiful rooster. Um, he is mean. <laughs> yes, he has attacked me a couple times. And actually these hens aren't very nice. They pick on each other. So we thought, well, for the mean rooster, with the mean chickens, and uh, I don't know, everyone seems to be happy now. So we have some eggs that were fertilized or hopefully fertilized by him in the incubator now, which leads me to talk about the, dun, 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 the incubator. I'm very excited. So I'm going to get out of here first before I finish this conversation. One sec. Hi. So the egg turner is not turning. <laughs> Yes, I had it in there like while I was warming up the incubator so that, um, cause that's kind of, I don't know why I was worried about it, but I just thought, okay, we'll see what it actually does. And then I kept looking at it and it looked like it was in the same spot, but instructions also say not to worry about that because, you know, they move so slowly that the human eye can't see it. So I would just check periodically, oh, there's Maximus, hi. Uh, over a couple days, but I was like, is that still in the same spot? But I doubted myself, so I filled it full of eggs, and then again, I kept checking, and I realized, no, it has not, the eggs have, are still the same, you know, angle, they haven't gone to the other side at all, or changed at all, so I took them out, put them in here, um, just on the tray, um, and then while I was turning them one day, I had someone help me and put an X on one side so that I know that I've actually turned them over um, to the other side. Now I ordered a new, um, a new, a new motor for it, but of course it's not going to be here until well after these are out. So my first time incubating and I will be hand turning these eggs, I guess every four hours <laughs> for 22. So incubating, I had the incubator running two days before I put the eggs in it because I've never used an egg incubator before. So I wanted to make sure that I could control the heat and the humidity. I collected from all three flocks. So I had um, an egg carton for each, each flock so that I could keep them separated. Well, now that they're in the incubator, I don't know whose is whose, but I just wanted to make sure that I collected um, Actually, I ended up collecting 13 from the olive acre and Easter acre flocks, and then 15 from the from the Bard Rock flock. Uh, so, on top of that, we've been checking for fertility regularly because we eat our eggs. So, I would say that fertility is like 99%. Did candling on on the seventh day, and so two eggs weren't growing. So we still have 39 on the go. Uh, so I've been hand turning them every four hours. I'm not getting up in the middle of the night and doing it or anything, but I, as soon as I wake up and then I do it and right before I go to bed. So we'll candle again around day 18. We are on day, 
I think, no, 10, 10 today. Yes, day 10, yeah. so. So it's exciting. So this is actually frozen sap that we collected earlier this week and then of course got cold again and we well, we were both busy during the week, so we didn't have time to boil it down. So this one is a five-gallon stainless steel pot. I have no idea how big this one is, but as you can see, it's probably more than five gallons. And then we still have these two pails, which are full of sap. So we're going to get to boiling today. And as promised, our end results of our sap boiling real maple syrup. Oh my mm -hmm. gosh, it is so good, eh, Eva? Yeah. So we just picked these cool jars up from Home Hardware. So, I don't know, makes it look fancy. <laughs> like we know what we're doing. Anyways, this is a really cool experience. Look forward to doing it again next year. Yeah. That, uh, this is our third one that we filled with these. So that's pretty cool. Yeah. All right. Well, once again, thanks from us at the Harvey Homestead, and thanks for learning with us. Bye. Bye.